Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. And my name is Ashton. Where is he, Ashton? He's got the flipping plop. Bloody hell. He's, he's plopping all unwell. over the world. Well, Little Paulie Peter, unfortunately, today. is not with us. Yeah. Moment. He's okay. He's fine. He's, he's not, alive. Yeah, he is alive. He's just not with he just wish us he was. currently. Yeah. yeah, he might wish he wasn't. He's just suffering a little. Uh, so we hope you get better soon, Peter, and we will we'll catch you on the flip side, my dude. Mm -hmm. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm good too. Good. Excited to be recording another podcast. We've only done a couple of hundred of them. Yeah, so I yeah, thought yeah. This one's different. It's still fresh yeah. and it's still exciting. <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy your birthday party? I had a lovely birthday. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I felt very blessed to have so many people around me. Yes. On my birthday. And I didn't cry. Did, you didn't. I was going to ask. I did get briefly a bit mardy. Okay. Um. So you were like one of the first people to arrive. Yes. So you may have seen the tail end of me being mardy. Oh, okay. But around, so I started it at three, about 2 p.m. Mm. I started to convince myself that it was a prank and no one was turning up. Oh, really? Uh, and I kept But you told like, us to come for three. I know, but I was, but I meant like ahead of three o'clock, I was like, no one's going to turn up. No one's going to really? come. It's a prank. And then one of my friends was like, I don't even know half of the other people at this party. How could we have all organized a prank that none of us are coming it's to your very party? true, yeah. I just thought, what if no one turns up? And then I started getting mardy because like everything hadn't been finished and mm. I was kind of just getting a bit amped up. So then when people started to arrive at like quarter past three, I was like, I need to snap out of this because I am currently mardy and I don't want to be horrible to be around. Alcohol does so help then I fix had to, that. I had to do a lap. And yeah. then when people were start to arrive, it was like, okay, mm -hmm. I can't be mardy. I've got things to do. Yeah. But yeah, there was a brief like 45 minutes to an hour where I was really mardy right. and then I was fine but, but I didn't cry no tears no tears that's the most important thing yeah it was lovely I wasn't able to stay very long but it seemed like a really fun time it was and nice. we were just talking about how many crisps you have, I have left so many bags of crisps in yeah. my house and so many sweets and so much cake and mm. loads of stuff in my freezer that didn't get cooked because I was like bringing freezer stuff out for people to eat mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't cook all of it so there's my freezer is still full and I need to get rid of Sounds it. Sounds like you need one weekend where you get incredibly drunk yeah. and eat loads of freezer food and crisps. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. Why not just have a second party and tell everyone that they, they can't bring anything? Yeah, don't bring anything. We just need to drink all this gin. Get rid of this for me, please. Incredible. Yeah. Well, it's time to talk about video games, I suppose. Ugh, if we have to. I would like to say that I saw Dead Island to the Spider on the way into the room. Mm -hmm. There's one down there and there's one by the door. And there's one up there as well. And there's one up there. So we are blessed. Yeah. We are blessed. Multiple dead island, uh, to, dead island the to the spiders. And the reason I mention that is because I've got to talk about this week's sponsor, which right. of course is usually a segue into talking about Dead Island to the Spider. Yeah. And his We've location. We've done it reversed today. We have. But it doesn't matter because the bulb is still on, which yep. means that the ad read is ready and I've got it here. Yeah. Are you prepared? I'm so ready. Reserve your plot now because death comes for us all with Tomba Special Edition. I like tomb. This is not just a grave plot. This is a grave plot with Tomba built into it, so you can platform your way into the afterlife. Cool. It's a very exciting Shouldn't partnership. Shouldn't it be Tomba? Because a tomb is where you're buried. Well, I'll tell and you... And a tome is a book. If... If Tiny Peter were here, yeah. he would be nerding out all over this. He but would I'll, be. I'll give some context as well. It is heavily rumoured that the reason it was called Tome B in the in, in Europe rather than Tome B, which it yeah, was in, in, in the Europe. In, in, in outside of the Europe, yeah. uh, is because Tome B is Italian for grave. Oh. However, with the special edition, apparently they've just thrown that all out the window and it's just going to be called Tome everywhere. Grave special edition. Grave special edition. So why not marry the two oh. and just get buried in a Tome grave? Oh, cool. In a grave grave. Does and it have you can pink play hair? Does the graves have pink hair? Well, I think maybe I'll have to check. But I mean, if you really want to get into it, you could dye your hair or wear a wig as you go into the grave. Right, yeah. And Or just a little pink wig on the grave as it's lowered into the ground. Cool. Something like that. So now you can play Tomba when you're dead. Nice. In your Tomba. Yeah. Or you could if it were real, but it's not. Oh. Unfortunately, we're all still alive and we've got to stay that way. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, no, we're we're of course sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you go in there, go there, sorry, and go support her, the grave and support <laughs> us. You get access to all sorts of rewards, including asking questions on this podcast, watching worst and weirdest games before anybody else, exclusive access to rules boss and main menu. A new new episode, episode of the main menu next week. The main menu next week. Very exciting. Is it next week? Yes. My goodness me. Are you seventh. sure? The seventh. Oh God, I need to check the schedule. I'm telling you. I believe you. It's the seventh. I'm telling you that James has been told to schedule main menu 
and that means that there might have been an error. So I need to double check. We'll have fixed that. However, very soon, uh, main menu coming out on uh, for, for for patrons, and it's a good one too. Mm -hmm. It's uh, well, I mean, they're all excellent. You'll they're love all them. great. Um, there's a few places you can find us on the internet, of course. Triplejud.mup is our website. That's where you can find links to our YouTube, our Twitch, if you want to get a cameo from us or hang out on our Discord. And TripleJumpShop.com is the other big one where you can get some lovely merchandise like this jacket and none of that. I don't have any on today. It's disgusting. It's in the wash because I wear it all the time. My hoodie. Your hoodie. You just have the hoodie. I, I have every other I've bit of I've got like a full outfit. I have every other bit of merch too, but I just I only really wear the zip-up hoodie. That's fair enough. What we should do actually is release every single item of clothing you could need, but Triple Jump branded, so mm. that you could wear head to toe a full Triple Jump outfit. I would love a pair of nice joggers with Triple Jump down the side. Yeah. We should We've make already those. got the jacket. There's probably yeah, yeah, a matching yeah. set that, yeah. uh, that could go with that. I would like uh, Triple Jump pants. I think that would be fun that too. That would be fun. We did sell a swimsuit for a little while, so... You know, it's possible. We'll look into it. We won't really. A few things out this week, as you mentioned, not main menu, asterisk. Or is there? I don't know. I don't think there is because it's a worst games ever week. And you also, if you're a patron, you get weirdest games this week. So mm. I think it's it's been pushed back a few days. So that's why I think main menu is next week. Okay. But it is a worst games ever week. This mm -hmm. week, for everyone on Sunday, what is coming out, Ben? Because you it's not on the schedule, so I'll just put a question mark. All-star karate. Cool. Featuring all the favorite stars. Like, like woman and man. Cool. You know, you know them. I know woman and man. Have you have you been watching the Olympics where woman and man have been doing the yeah, karate? I have been All watching the stars. some of the Olympics. All of the stars. Additionally, there is actually another video coming out this week. There is. It's already out mm. at time of release for this one. Um, it is why do gamers love conventions so much? It's mm. a video that Kat, Kieran, and I are working on. We went to Insomnia Gaming Festival, RIP, yeah. and uh, filmed a bunch of stuff there, including. The cosplay that I put on my Twitter a little while ago, the Pikmin yes. cosplay. If you want to see that bad boy in action um, and also find out how I made it, then you can watch that video now. Please watch it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a great video. Uh, it also came at quite a timely moment as well in that insomnia shut down suddenly after <laughs> you'd filmed half the video. Yeah, the video was like basically on its way to being finished and then Insomnia just uh, ceased to exist. So uh, we had to put a little asterisk in the video, but it's fine. Yeah, oh, no, it's, it's still a great video and it still explores the topic that, of, mm -hmm. the, of the question that you ask about why people like to go there and stuff. So go check out a really fun video and you get to see some more stuff. If you're a patron, of course, you'll have already seen the vlog, Yeah. Uh, the exclusive vlog from when we went to Insomnia, but now you get a little bit more context and uh, a deep dive into when you did red face, which is yeah. still feels not okay, but uh, yeah. it was certainly a visual treat for yes. everybody yes. Uh, out on the channel now. But that's not the only red face that's going on the channel this week. I have been going hell for leather, and I'm going to confidently say now that this video will be out tonight after the podcast. And that is, I played Deadpool 2013 and 2024, so you don't have to. Oh, cool. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, yes. but Deadpool and Wolverine came out. People are loving it. Yeah. And because of that, de the 2013 Deadpool game, which has been delisted from digital storefronts twice over the course of its lifetime due to licensing issues, physical copies are up to like £250 on eBay, which is insane. Crazy. So I made a little video about it where I have played it. I'll, I'll maybe mention a bit about it and what we're playing, but really you should go watch the full video tonight. And uh, I worked together with uh, our writer Cat on this doing a bit of a deep dive into how the game came to be, its announcement, its development, the various times it was pulled, the fact that it costs so much bloody money to get a physical copy, and also my hands-on impressions and thoughts on the game and whether or not it's worth actually paying £250 for. Uh, so hopefully I finish it in time. Fingies crossed. Fingies crossed. Because I'm saying it, it's out tonight. So go and watch okay. it. Please. Thank you very much. Should we crack on with question one? Yes, let's. Now, Piney Tita would normally read this, but uh, he's poorly, as we've Why mentioned. don't you do it? I will. I'd like Billy to do it, but you know what? He doesn't speak. He's so handsome that all he needs to do is just He just smoulders so. at the camera the you whole don't, time. Don't make eye contact with mm -mm. him. Or you're, it'll you'll be fall like, in love. It'll be like the elephant's foot from Chernobyl's. You'll just melt. <laughs> you don't want in a bad way, <laughs> in like a goopy way. You don't want that at all. Chris McVeigh asks this question. Hi, BAP. Hi. The Xbox 360 marketplace has shut down after almost... 19 years effectively making the end of marking. making sorry marking the end of life for the system 
not to dig up an old console war, but also to do that. But when this nearly happened to the PS3 store recently, there was such backlash that Sony abandoned the plan and that store is still running. But this happened without much protest. Is this just a question of timing, i.e. was it slightly too soon to shut down the PS3 store and this proves that it's now fine to do it if they want to? Does a question mark does the fact that backwards compatible 360 content will remain purchasable on the current Xbox store mean that this is less of a loss than the entirety of the PS3 digital content would be? Is it a bit weird that we're even concerned with companies not letting us spend money on them anymore? Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Got a small write up here. Uh, from Polygon, written by Nicole Carpenter. Microsoft has officially shut off access to the Xbox 360 marketplace. Gamers now mourn the loss of the iconic console storefront and the hundreds of games that are no longer accessible due to the closure, as the Video Game Hi History Foundation posted on Twitter. The Xbox 360 went on sale on November the 22nd, 2005 and ushered in a new generation of multiplayer gaming. The Xbox 360 marketplace made it just shy of its 20th anniversary. The PlayStation 3 store remains the final frontier of this console generation's online services as, the, as Nintendo took its Wii shop offline in 2019. Today, the Xbox 360 marketplace shuts down for good, taking hundreds of games and DLC off the market with no legal way to access them, the Video Game History Foundation wrote on Twitter. We're working to fix copyright law for game preservation, but for now, we figured a cake wouldn't hurt. And they posted a photo of a green cake with a little Master Chief Lovely. on it. Lovely. Uh, so there we go. What do you think, Ash? Well, I was going to bring up the, the Deadpool game in response to this question yeah. because I think this is I think that's a really good example of the fact that games will continue to kind of have moments in the sun for as long as you allow them to have these moments in the sun and um, obviously now it's just physical release which is great but like you say ends up with 200 pound copies and stuff so I think that it's still a shame that this has shut down but I do think that there is I think Chris's reasons for why there hasn't been as much of a backlash are pretty accurate in that I just don't think they made as much of a song and dance about it as Sony did. Because Sony were like, we're shutting it down at this point, just so you know. Buy it all now. Whereas Xbox, I feel like just were like, we're shutting it down. Sorry about it. And like, didn't <laughs> tell anyone. Um right. And so less people were kind of aware. Like I wasn't aware this was happening. Whereas when the PlayStation 3 store was being shut down, everyone was people talking about People were furious, it. yeah. Um, and I also think that Xbox do more to preserve the games that you can play. Absolutely. Like you say, on Game Pass and on the current Xbox store. And I think that that is the big difference between the two. I mean, there's obviously going to be some casualties out there that haven't been added to the Xbox store. There'll be games that we will never see again or that we'll only be able to find in physical release. And when that movie comes out, people are going to, you know, go crazy. When for... Cloudy with a, with a Chance of Meatballs 4 yeah. comes out, yeah, yeah, people yeah. are going to be clamoring for that clamoring THQ for Xbox classic. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, and I, I think that it's gen generally because some of these games, most of them, are still accessible in other ways. Um, I do think it's still a shame, but I do think it's kind of inevitable that like the Xbox 360 store and the PlayStation 3 store would close down because people don't buy things on there anymore. And I think that there must be the cost of keeping them awake, awake, active, yes, <laughs> awake, um, probably outweighs how much money is being spent on it from the general public mm. but like i say i think maybe xbox have done this the right way in the way they do a lot with game preservation and people can still buy these games if they want to unlike with the playstation 3 store which is just going to see the death of of many digital titles yeah. so yeah the ps3 store was such a i mean just the whole playstation network infrastructure pre ps4 was mm -hmm. a disaster it didn't make any sense the name changing system only came about in the past few years and even then they said uh you, you, yeah but you have to sign this waiver because it might actually break everything you might lose access to all your stuff we don't <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't know even though we designed it uh, so them turning that off was just as you say just a kill switch it was done you, no way to access any of this stuff mm -hmm. uh the uh, microsoft have been way better about backwards compatibility obviously it's a it's a crying shame that there will be inevitably a lot of games that are lost now mm -hmm. that this has been done but the fact that there is still access to a, a a large number of items through backwards compatibility is 
is the best case scenario here. Uh, to lean into the console war argument, I suppose there is there is a small element of the fact in terms of there being less of an outcry about this, taking you know the, the fact that there is backwards compatibility out of the room for a second is probably because there are there are a sizable number of the original Xbox 360 player base who don't play on Xbox anymore. Yeah. Who probably are on PlayStation and made the leap 10 years ago. Yeah. Maybe longer. Um and so yeah, it's it it would suck if they didn't if they couldn't get access to their stuff and that they've invested money in that digital ecosystem and it's just gone forever. However, they wouldn't be able to access it now anyway if they're if they're embedded in a completely different platform. Mm -hmm. So that ultimately could play a part in it. But it's mainly the fact that they can access a lot of this stuff if they want to. So it's it's sad though. It nearly made it to 20 years. And yeah. you know, this is one of the first major console marketplaces, and that's really exciting. Um that they were able to 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 kickstart everything. And it's uh, it's a shame. It's a shame that it's gone beyond the fact that some stuff is being lost. It's just kind of sad. Yeah. An end of an era, as it were. A part of gaming history Precisely. has died. Rip. Moment of silence. That's enough. Should we move on to something? Uh, what's Well, why are you doing well, this while so, Peter's not you here? You know, new year, new age, new year, new me. New segment. <laughs> right. I'm so 26 now. You're 26, so it's time for... And it's time for a new segment. I I'm trying something new in the 26... Yeah. Does your Sixth January year start the month after you, your you turn? My, it's like the Chinese New Year, but it's just right. Really... So you Ashton calendar is yeah. birthday to birthday. Birthday to birthday. Interesting. I count down to the Happy New Year. Explains why HMRC birth. is furious with you. <laughs> yeah, you're working. I on disagree with their bit. entire calendar system. So um, when they sent bailiffs around and you said, I said, I disagree. I disagree. I said this is how my calendar works. Right. You have to respect me and my choices. I'm a sovereign citizen. And then <laughs> they um, <laughs> they were like. Fair enough, can't argue with that. Yeah. And they left me to it. So. That's way fair enough if it works yeah. for you. But please explain this section. Uh, yeah, so it's a segment where I thought we could talk about... Oh, well, you'll see, you'll see. Okay. It's called What We Play In. I'm nervous. It's What We Play In time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. Girl, Peter, what have you been playing? I've been playing Fallout 76. Shocking to know. Well, what? Still playing that game. Still trudging through it. Still having a good time. Trudging. Well, yeah. A lot, a lot of trudging at the moment because yeah. I'm consistently over-encumbered and also my stash box is full. So I cannot get rid of anything anymore. I'm having to like... It was... Anyway, it's not important. I've been playing that. I, can't, uh, I, I still remember when I first played it and the stash box was tiny and they ended up upping it for everyone. Is it still not big it's enough? It's 1,200 like capacity now. And, and is that weight or, that I don't, or yeah, items? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's stupid. Just give people Just a bottomless box. Just give me as box. much that's as I really, want. I don't want to have to pay for it, Bethesda. Don't mm. make me pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and also this week, I've been playing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice. Oh League. my God, you did. Yeah. So? So? <laughs> you loving it? <laughs> so strange what a strange game yeah like i keep the, the 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 beginning mission is kind of fun like the first time you meet batman oh that's the best it's really bit. good and when then you're being hunted by batman yeah it's rad and then so and then it just goes go yeah. go now go mm. do go kill some things yeah. And they talk all the time, so much so that at some points they're having different conversations at the same time. <laughs> because I've walked into an area where Harley Quinn has something to say, but Boomerang's still finishing the conversation from before. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. I'm terrible at the traversal. Like, I, I'm, I'm so bad at it. Who are you playing as? Um, I've been playing mainly as Harley Quinn. Okay. Um, it's all a bit slow, isn't it? Yeah, you do get some traversal stuff as you as level you up, through, but it's yeah, it's not ideal. Um, yeah, it's fine. My boyfriend was like, "Thank God I'm not playing this because he's like getting actually mad about how much they talk all the time." <laughs> yeah. um, and there's a couple of like weird bits where it's like, "Oh, we're going into a cutscene now," and there's like a brief kind of forty seconds of just silence as like the game decides to start doing the cutscene. Oh, really? As it goes in, and oh, it's like. Yeah. Okay, we've got to wait for them all to be get into position and then <laughs> do the cutscene. But I'm enjoying it. Asterisk. Question mark. Yeah. I think I'm gonna keep playing it because it's just a good, real head empty swing about Metropolis kind of vibes. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I'm enjoying it. 
Thank you for giving my birthday present. Well, you're very welcome. Um, Glad you're having a great yeah. time. And we'll see how I get on with it. I don't know whether I'll last the entire runtime of the game, but... Especially knowing what I told you about the story, in that, again, yeah. spoilers for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but it's implied that... You don't finish. You, the the, doesn't the story finish. doesn't finish. Yeah. So it's, and it's implied... I'm wondering how different it'll be now that it's like a few seasons down the way. Maybe. Well, they're not doing any more seasons, so this is... Well, that's it. Yeah, there's like seven Brainiacs you've got to kill, but you've only... Yeah. Got, when it launched, you only had access to one. Yeah. And then on the next season, you had to find Brainiac again, but it's just the same fight. Also, I'm not going to be able to buy slash play as Miss Mrs. Freeze or the Joker mm. until I like get loads of the currency and I oh refuse to pay for it. The only way to get so, that currency is to grind the most tedious missions yeah. imaginable. So um, um, we'll see. But it's also implied that maybe the the Justice League that you killed wasn't actually them and that they're imprisoned on the tower. But we'll never know. Spoilers. I did warn people. <laughs> but that's also not hinted at very heavily in the plot. Yeah. That's just what players are desperately trying to glean from it. Like, oh, maybe there's maybe more there's, to it. Maybe they're it still alive. Because a lot of them kind of went down like chumps and that was kind of sad. And yeah. people were really cross about Batman and yeah. stuff. And it's like, well, maybe it's I'm not. I'm going to get... Maybe it's not. Green me. Lantern's my first guy to kill. And that's my, my task for this evening. Yeah. But I'm like, this guy just shot jets out of the air mm -hmm. when he was giant and huge. What am I going to do with my baseball bat and machine gun? Yeah, you know how you're going to take him down? You're going to shoot a machine gun at him until he dies. Yeah. Which is really dumb, isn't it? He's a superhero. It? It's really silly. But yeah. that's how you take them all down. You shoot them with guns. Cool. And it just feels, I don't know, there's something very wrong with that game. Anyway, that's what I've been playing this week. Glad you're loving it, though. That's great. That's Thank That's you. really... Yes. Uh, I have actually started a new playthrough of Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes. Oh, yeah. And we should take this time to say rest in peace to Tony Pankhurst, oh, yeah. who was the physical portrayal of the curator, um, the curator whom was... Who whom we are, lovingly refer to as Dr. Anil Hill, Hill. Hill. Which was a hangover from Until Dawn, where that guy who spoke to you in between sections was also called Dr. Anil Hill, even mm -hmm. though he's a different guy. Mm -hmm. But I, I was... He's like my favorite character. And it's very, very sad that he has passed away. Um, so our thoughts are with his family, obviously, yeah. at, at this time. I did look into it because when I read the tweet from Supermassive, they said he... he was the f physical. The physical trail. version, yeah. yeah. Which, upon closer uh, in inspection, means that actually he didn't provide the voice. I was going to ask, yeah, that's what I also was curious about when they said physical portrayal, if it was just yeah. his likeness so it's just his likeness which means that very selfishly obviously the, the the main headline here is that sadly this man has passed away is that the character could continue yeah if they if they wanted to and presumably they'll deal with it in a very sensitive way yeah or hopefully but he's also a bit of an enigma as a character so i feel like if they're like doctor who him and he just evolves into something else then that he could still have the same voice but a slightly different face. face yeah they could do that but given that the whole series is about uh, it, as an anthology, it's got the same actors in it, mm -hmm. or at least the same physical Some versions of, them, of the actors. Yeah. And m many, on many occasions, they're actually voiced by different people in different games. Like yeah. they, they just use the skin the faces. of whoever, whoever they've scanned. Yeah, which is kind of th trips me out a little bit. Yeah. But I, the curator, I think, Imagine is Imagine it's your face and someone else's voice. That's kind of spooky, weird, isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah. But uh, as, as my favorite character is the curator, and as the episodes have gone on, sort of more and more hints have been subtly laid about who he is and why he's there and the fact that he's obviously not in charge, he's doing it on behalf of someone else. Mm -hmm. I really want, I'm, I'm hoping that they build to a point where maybe there's just an entire game about the curator, which mm -hmm. tells us what is going on, or they just keep it a mystery. But either way, though, I do hope the character can continue yeah. uh, in spite of this loss, which is very sad. Uh, but House of Ashes is great. And, uh, and I'm is that the witch one? No, that is the Iraq war one. Oh, the, you're with the, killing with the temples. him. Yeah, you're killing him. Stop, stop mashing the button. You're killing him. Uh, that one. <laughs> you told me mash button, I mash button. Exactly. You've got to use your... If not, I'm supposed to mash button, why tell me mash button? <laughs> There's a man I can shoot. Should I shoot him? Yes, because yes. I can. Good, good soldier logic. <laughs> he was a farmer, an innocent man. <laughs> Outside of that, I have played some more Remnant 2. I think I'm nearly at the end of it now. That's a good game. No more bosses involving rolling cubes, though, which is sad, which is the best type of boss. I played some Dead by Daylight as well for the first I time. I saw that you played that. Yeah, for the first time ever. It's, I love Dead by Daylight, but exclusively with people who I know. Yeah, I was playing with two people I knew and then strangers, and it's really yeah. hard. I, I wasn't good at it at all. Just like 
uh, playing it with your pals, like one of your friends is the baddie and you're all the yeah. goodies, is so funny. It's one of my favorite games to play if like I'm online with people, it's like, should we play Dead by Daylight? Because then you're just running around being like, I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. And then you're just screaming as you see your friend running towards That's you. That's the experience that I want. Mm -hmm. I did play one game with someone who was uh, Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. Yeah. And he pulled off the most, I saved the clip because I we'd all died and I was spectating him. He was the last survivor. Uh, and who's the one with the, the hockey mask? Is it Jason? Jason? Jason was coming after him. He was being, because the killer can run faster than the, 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 what are they called? Victims? I don't know. Survivors. survivors. Than the survivors. And so he was gaining on him. And my dude did like a 360 no scope spin just dodged past him and ran back the other way. And I was like, that is an unbelievable, I don't even know. <laughs> How did they even do that? That was incredible. Just got all these mad hacks. Um, but yeah, that was, I want to play some more of that because I did, I did mm -hmm. like that a lot. Um, and finally, obviously, I played Deadpool 2013, a video out on the channel tonight, fingers crossed. Um, and it's certainly an action game from 2013, I'll mm -hmm. say that much. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> that is all I've played. I forgot that I've... I've spent money on Dead by Daylight. Like I've invested in other killers. Really? Yeah, I think I have like the clown and I have the huntress and I think I have someone else as well. I was I was big into it during the pandemic and I spent money on it. But I can't remember if I spent money on the PlayStation version or Surely it will it's it must cross have been play, right? So yeah, hopefully I know, it will but follow it, obviously you. You, if you buy it on one account, it won't necessarily come. Oh, that sucks that you can't unify that stuff. Yeah, if only every game had their own inbuilt system where you logged in and then you could carry it over. Yeah. That wouldn't be cumbersome at all. I hate though, that. So, yeah, that'd be fine. Time for question two now. Mm. Comes from Connor Bennett. Hey, Ben Ashton and also Peter. I'm afraid not also no, Peter. He's unfortunately not with Paris 2024 is the first Summer Olympics without a video game in over 30 years. And with tie-in games for other sporting events and major movies a thing of the past... Yeah, huh? hmm. And with tie-in games for other sporting events and major movies a thing of the past in favour of temporary promotions with pre-existing games, mostly Fortnite, is this a good thing? Yes, the shelf of these games was very limited, but on the other hand, once the in-game events are over, it can be the last we ever see of them. Obligatory, did you ever, did you ever have a favourite tie-in game to round out the question? Thank you, Connor. I'm mostly sad that we're not getting any more Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Yeah, that's the one that shocks me the most. I flip and love those games on the Wii. Like, and we would play those all the time. It was like we'd play that over Wii Sports because Mario and the Sonic at the Olympic Games are so good. You get to swang that hammer around as knuckles. Yeah, get the nunchucks out. <laughs> Jump! And then... Go. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I'm sad about this. And I'm also mostly sad because... They decided not to do a game because they wanted to do NFTs. What? Rubbish! They did NFTs? Hate you. Yeah. They, the Olympics? The Olympics were like, oh, we're not going to do games. The organization that famously rolls into a country and completely like destroys it and yeah. then buggers off for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Crazy, right? That's strange so that they would not do on that. Brand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were... They decided not to do a game this year and I think that is a big shame. And I know that like, yeah, okay, maybe they only get a few months of enjoyment out of them for people and maybe the cycle of having to turn them around is very very quick however we love the tokyo olympic game we were playing that in 2021 yeah. oh my god that's when i forgot billy was in that game when he ran really fast yeah yeah yeah. that's an all-time moment he ran like usain bolt it was crazy it was incredible yeah and i think that that game was great i completely forgot game. we played that game i got the platinum trophy in that game nice it's I, not nice, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I'm sad that they're not doing another game. I think that, I think that the world is so, moves on so quickly now from things that I think maybe the the temporary promotions just seem like an easier thing to do than these big substantial games. Um, I read somewhere online that like it takes they only have like a few months to pull the games together before the actual really? release date because obviously you don't know exactly what sports and who's going to be participating in them and if you want to have like featured people in it you know you don't know what's going to happen yeah. but i just yeah i think it's a big shame and i think that i would like to see the tie-in game return i think we don't get enough of them and no. yeah okay they're always a little bit bad yeah and a little bit wonky yeah and normally that's the best kind of fun you can have yeah so why can i not have my wonky wonky tie-in games please 
Olympics. Come on, Olympics. Take your NFTs and shove them where the sun don't shine. <laughs> it is the end of an era. Another end of an era question, this one. Mm -hmm. And I think it very much goes hand in hand with uh, move, the decline in movie tie-ins as well, in that games cost too much to make. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no real space for AA studios to exist because if you get one swing and if you fail, your studio's done. And that really sucks. So in the strictest sense of like, do I think it's good that these are gone? Not really, because you've got to imagine that the Olympic, the, the, the contract for making an Olympics game is probably relatively lucrative, especially mm -hmm. to a small studio. I wonder who made the last one. Let me look it up. Yeah, that would be good to know, actually. I bet it's made by someone massive and I'm going to eat my words now. Um, it's it's not a genre that like I'm actively interested in and that I would actively support, apart from obviously the last Olympics game, which was phenomenal. It was developed by Sega. Oh, well, they've got all the infrastructure to, to make that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They could probably, they could plop out another one. They could plop out another one. You've not got to change that much. Just put That's an amazing. Eiffel Tower in the background and you're golden. Simple. So simple. In fact, the last one probably had the Tokyo Tower in it. Just paint it a different color. You're fine. Yeah. It's the same, same thing. Um, but yeah, I am sad to see them die off. I've played so many crappy movie tie-in games over the years, mm -hmm. you know, on worst games and also for bad trophies back in the day. So... I think it is a real shame. I believe that the Olympics this year does have a mobile game tie-in, and that is increasingly, I think, replacing the the, the tie-in video game. Is oh, we've released this this horrible free-to-play thing. Yeah, go on, or there's something in Fortnite or something like that. And I do think it's genuinely a shame because things like a Mario and Sonic on the Wii. That would I probably, love Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. I'm so sad about this. It would probably still do well on the Switch now. And, you know, when... The, I mean, it's when, not like Switch Sports was anything to sing about. No. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Top tier. Full opera. But, <laughs> full opera. But, like, you know, Disney game, um, Disney movie tie-ins, those don't really exist anymore. And, yeah, you might get, like, I don't know, a Thor skin in that sounds, <laughs> sounds good, doesn't I'm it? All to you make might get a, a Thor, Thor skin, skin in Fortnite, right? You might get a Thor skin in Fortnite. You get your Thor skin out, <laughs> but because that's where the kids are playing that's these where days. The kids that's where the kids are playing these days. They want to play with their Thor skins in Fortnite. <laughs> However, I, I'm sorry because of that. I think that it's probably the correct decision, even if it didn't cost an arm and a leg, to, to make a Thor tie-in video game, for mm -hmm. example, which it would. Way too much effort now compared to how it used to be, and even then, probably quite a lot of effort. Um, the kids aren't there to play it. No. You buy you buy Thor The Dark World on PS3 for your for your kiddo back in the day, and yeah, they probably would have played it, but now... They, they wouldn't they have had want, a good time. Lots of kids only want the, the live service platform games that are free to play and that they can do pretty much anything in your Roblox, your Fortnite. Well, like that. nowadays, obviously, you've got things like Disney Dreamlight Valley and the Marvel Snap game and that other Marvel game, mm -hmm. fighting the, game, yeah, Midnight yeah, Suns or whatever. You've got like a lot of shooter. these kind of other... Yes, the hero shooter. I can't remember what it's called. Rivals? Called? Yes. Rivals? Um, where you've got these characters... Well, you can wear your Thor skin if mm. you want to. Um, and you don't necessarily need individual games anymore because they're kind of all stuck in. To Everything's like, together. Yeah. Yeah. So One there's just not as much space thing. for them, which is, uh, which is rubbish. So in terms of a tie-in that you love. Yeah. That would be Mario and Sonic. That's your, that's a tie-in that you. Yeah. Yeah. I love Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish they could go back to the Olympic Games again. They're banned. They're banned. They're not allowed anymore. Yeah. For me, I'm going to say the Watchmen tie-in games, which were terrible beat-em-ups. I had another one. Um, they were really bad, but I loved them. I, I played them a lot. I didn't write it down because I was like, I'll remember this. Mm. And then you mentioned Thor skin and it's gone it. out of my head. Brain full of Thor skin. Now. Yeah. No, I can't remember what it was. Oh. It was like a, a kid's movie. Okay. I used to play as a Lizzie kid. Lizzie McGuire. No. Hannah Montana. No. Uh, I mean, I did love the Bratz video game, but that wasn't right. a movie tie-in. That was more of a franchise game. Sure. Yeah, that have was just an IP. With the Bratz movie. A license thing, yeah. That's um, fair enough. Yeah. Tell you what movie tie-in game I didn't like. What? Um, the Golden Compass and also Narnia. I think we've played a, at least one of those I think you've played both games. of those in Worst Games yeah. ever. They're so hard. 
And as a child, it used to drive me mental. But I did like how in the Narnia game, you could just yeet Lucy around. Do you remember? Yes, you really she, could. You would just, just drag her about and then you could just, just toss her into the Just launch her. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. Actually, the Lord of the Rings games, um, Two Towers and Return of the King, I Gollum. think. Uh, no, uh, in terms of being movie tie-ins, they are they are top tier. Yeah, those are excellent, and uh, I think Peter would probably say the Peter Jackson King Kong tie-in as well mm. is also a, mm -hmm. a very fondly thought of ones. But in terms of sporting events, probably that can't go wrong. Mario and Sonic. Yeah, probably something really like that. Can't. But it's sad. I I do. I am going to miss them for sure. I don't want to have to log into Rocket League and get an Olympic skin for my car. You know, that's not. Yeah, that's not the same. Even though, as I said. I'm not the what I'm not the person who's first out the door to queue up and get my copy of an Olympics video game. I'm sad to see it go. I'm sad. Yeah. Full stop. Should we move on to something a little bit strange? Yes, and very up to date and current and happening. What is it, Billy? It's weird news. You just cut him off. He's Sorry, he wasn't that. gonna he was taking too long. <laughs> It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, if you'd like to submit some weird video game news to us, maybe tell us all about your Thor skin. Then you need to post it, not the Thor skin, but the link to the news. a relevant news article yeah. underneath the social media post that goes out on a Tuesday, Tuesday, except for this week when it didn't. It did. On Facebook? Yeah. Not on Twitter. Well, it was out. No, it didn't go out on Twitter this week for some reason. Well, I got my news from Twitter. No, uh, uh, Fraser put another post out yesterday. Oh, I see. Didn't go out on Tuesday, though, is my point. I see. Unfortunately. So apologies. I know there was a lot. There was mass panic. There was, there was. Where's the weird news Where post? is it? I don't understand. You said it's on a Tuesday and it's not. And it's Tuesday and it's not here. I don't understand. However, if you'd like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Support us at the appropriate tier and become a podcast producer. Just like Chip Thompson's Thumbs. G.Y. Goliath. Nexus Polaris. Nicole Hansen. Andy Scott. Blake Thomas. Kyle Gary. Doesn't seem right. Eric Sue. Shaman Nomo. Great Giggity. Michael Pendlebury. Katie Garrard. Huge Ass. Gabrielle Philippine. And Big Money Bobby Vegas. Wah, bow, 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 wah, bow. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, have you got some strange stories there? I do. It was submitted on Twitter by Snowyboy Yanni04 and Johnny Mac13. Nice. Top fan, no relation. Damn it. it comes from Kotaku by Ethan Gack. Oh, gotcha. 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 Um, Daytona USA arcade cabinet was hiding $400,000 and a gun. Whoa. How did it get a gun? It can't <laughs> buy a gun. It's not a person. That is the Second Amendment, baby. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Dave Toner. Uh, Dave Toner. A police bus revealed contraband inside the 90s Sega racer. Daytona USA was a hit 90s arcade racing game by Sega that helped millions of kids pretend they were badass NASCAR drivers and sported a famous Daytona. theme song that certain Kotaku editors still get stuck in their head to this day. Let's go away. This week, it was discovered that one of the old cabinets was hiding $400,000, ammunition and a handgun, according to the Western Australia police who seized it. Um, ABC, the Australian one, not the American one, right. reports... That police carried out a bust of a rebels biker, huh? A biker, rebels, a bikey gang, bikey gang member, bikey, is what it says. Right. Okay. Well, the I was, I bust was just sort of, of a rebels bikey. I was gang taking the piss a little bit by saying bikey because because I was going to say biker and then I realised it says bikey. Well, the only reason I said that is because. Some there may be some crossover in our audience for the uh, Australian comedy troupe Auntie Donna. Yeah, and they did a, a skit about a bikey gang, and so maybe it's just maybe it clearly it's just is just Australian, Australian parlance yeah. to call it a bikey rebels gang. Rebels bikey gang member on July twenty eighth after a traffic stop revealed the person was carrying four thousand dollars and an extendable baton. Whoa! How dare you? You can only have regular batons. Yes, Western Australian police raided his residence at a commercial property in Lansdale near Perth, at the fourth biggest city in the country. Ooh. Don't know why you to know that bit. It was at the second property where police found a bunch of old arcade cabinets. One of them, Daytona USA, was allegedly hiding a contraband jackpot, $400,000 in cash, and a colt. A horse was in there too. A horse. Uh, there you are. There's the inside of the cabinet with the four hundred thousand dollars. Wow, in it. that's a pretty good place to hide it. To I'd be, be pretty upset that they ripped it apart my Daytona USA cabinet. Yeah. Whether the firearms are used to commit offences or used to cause fear to victims who may be targeted, the risk of a person being seriously injured or killed in a confrontation increases with a firearm when a firearm is present. 
So that's why yes. we shouldn't have guns. We have seen a reckless disregard for community safety shown by outlaw motorcycle gang members. I think you mean bikey, bikey gang members. Gangs, yeah. So we know the removal of these firearms from the community of gang members has made our community safer. And then it tells you what Daytona is. Existing ones, the, the cabinets, yeah. currently go for around $12,000. Wow. If you went to an arcade, movie theater, or Chuck E. Cheese in the 90s, you probably sat in one. That one's worth way more, though. Yeah, that one's got four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, if you, you pay twelve thousand dollars for it and you open it, it's got four hundred thousand dollars in. in it. It's like a mystery box. Yeah, a loot box. Yeah. Well, what's poor, inside poor, your cabinet? A dead mouse. Poor, poor David Toner was led away in handcuffs after yeah. that, and that was the last we saw. Shouldn't him. have been in a bikey gang. You shouldn't be in a bikey gang. It's not good for your health. I've got some weird news. Do you? That's crazy. I'm going to read it for you. This is an article that was submitted by Connor Bennett at cbennett underscore 12 relation. <laughs> and uh, this is from PC Gamer written by comments. No, uh, Joshua Wolands. And it is it is a very good headline. I'm excited. You, you will not be able to predict where this goes. <laughs> Blizzard. Blizzard. Men's Rift with Whoopi Goldberg at Whoopi Goldberg themed weed event as Diablo 4's Lilith presents Star with Key to Hell. Did Blizzard have beef with Whoopi Goldberg? Yes. Wow. I'll tell you about tell it. Tell me all about We've it. We've definitely spoken, and we may have spoken about it on I the think podcast I remember a long time ago. About this, yeah. In a truce that will rank in significance alongside Westphalia, Versailles and Paris, <laughs> Diablo 4 maker Blizzard Entertainment and Whoopi Goldberg from Sister Act, it says. From Sister, I mean, that is her most famous world role, but she's been in so many other she things. She has. Have publicly buried the hatchet. At a Whoopi Goldberg-themed cannabis event with Diablo's general manager and Lilith herself in attendance, no less. If you don't remember, Goldberg got upset at Blizzard around the time of Diablo 4's release last year, railing against the company in a now-deleted Instagram post for failing to port the game to her preferred system, the Mac. Oh my God, yes, I do remember this now. To tell the truth, Goldberg turned the other cheek not long after. She got a refund for the game and though still uh, rankled, what? About not being able to play Diablo, of which she's a genuine fan, moved on. I think it's crazy that Whoopi Goldberg, off of Sister Act and the hit movie Ghost, mm. uh, loves Diablo. Loves Diablo, loves, loves it. it. Uh, Just can't imagine her get finishing their America's Loose Women, whatever it's called, The View, mm -hmm. that she's on. Talking about stuff and then going home. It's time for my raid. Down to I've, got, I've got to do a raid now. But now Blizzard has gone a step further. Lilith and Inarius, cosplayers, it says, not the real ones, <laughs> turned up at last Saturday's A Night with Whoopi event held to promote the actor's range of medicinal, uh, sorry, medical cannabis products to present her with the key to hell. Diablo general manager Rod Ferguson, who found himself blindsided by Whoopi's Apple user anger last year, was also there to mend fences with the actor. The pictures of the event are really quite something. Seeing 68-year-old Goldberg flanked by the mother of demons and creator of Sanctuary absolutely beaming is a thing I am struggling to process with my small <laughs> mortal mind. Naturally, it's all a daft publicity, a publicity stunt, but you also can't deny that Goldberg is a genuine Diablo diehard. Not just because she took to social media to vent her frustrations about Diablo 4 last year, but because look at this photo of her in full gamer stance as she plays the game at the event. This is a woman who has transmorphed a, a wound imp or two in her time. What? What? Yeah, anyway, there she is. Leaning forwards, going for it. Hunched she's, down on the PC. She's so cool. Look at that one as Playing well. Playing Diablo. That she's really great. into it. That's, oh, Mick, she loves it. Look at that fun. big smile on her face. Beaming. 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 I wonder if that's the real Lilith. No, it's not the real Lilith. No, the cosplayer. Cosplayer. Real Lilith is busy. Yeah. And Being the, the ruler of hell. Real. <gasps> that's the end of weird news, which means it is time for... You got your paper there? Got it. The big discussion. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion that this week comes courtesy of Ferris Wheeler. Hello, my jumps. Hello. With the SAG strike making headlines again and the AI debate no closer to a resolution, I wanted to take a moment to consider the ramifications of AI in art. Personally, I am not a fan, but I feel that since the genie is out of the bottle, there is no amount of pushback that can do anything but delay its use by our corporate overlords. With that in mind, how does this impact a game's status as a work of art? 
If AI does the voice acting, does that take away a bit of its artistic soul? How much human intervention is required for a game to still be considered an artful endeavor? Philosophically yours, Ferris Huila. I have uh, got a bit of a write-up here. Mm -hmm. It's from The Guardian uh, to let us know a bit about this new strike that is happening. Hollywood's video game performers voted to go on strike Thursday, throwing part of the entertainment industry into another work stoppage after talks for a new contract with major game studios broke down over artificial intelligence protections. The strikes, the second for video game voice actors and motion capture performers under the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Arts, SAG-AFTRA, will begin at 12.01 Friday. This, this move comes after nearly, nearly two years of negotiations with gaming giants, including divisions of Activision, Warner Bros, and Walt Disney Company over a new interactive media agreement. sag after negotia negotiators say games have been made over wages and job safety in the video game contract, but that the studios will not make a deal over the regulation of generative AI. Without guardrails, game companies could train AI to replicate an actor's voice or create a digital replica of their likeness without consent or fair compensation, the union said. Fran Drescher, the union's president, said in a prepared statement that members would not approve a contract that would allow companies to abuse AI. There's a quote here. Enough is enough. When these companies get serious about offering an agreement our members can live and work with, we will be here ready to negotiate, Drescher said. A representative for the studios did not immediately respond to an email seeking comment. Uh, there is a, a further little bit that I got from a CBS News article that I think also shed some light on a particular area where the two are butting heads mm -hmm. over this. The industry has told us, point blank, that they do not necessarily consider everyone who is rendering movement performance to be a performer that is covered by the collective bargaining agreement, sag after Chief Contract Officer Ray Rodriguez said at a news conference Thursday afternoon. He said some physical performances are being treated as data. So it seems that one of the sticking points there is that this isn't just about hey, you can't use Troy Baker's voice or something like it in a game. Yeah, unless it's, it sells you it as an NFT. That's very true. Bad example. <laughs> um, but it, it, they're also bargaining on behalf of the people who are wearing the motion capture suits and yeah. rolling off things. And seemingly, the likes of Activision are saying, well, we've already got this guy falling over once. Yeah. So... We'll, we'll just, just use that. We'll just use thing. that forever, or we'll we'll generate something similar to it. But it's actually no, because then these people will never find work again. Because yeah. surely there's only so many movements you can do before you've got enough of a library to generate new ones. Mm -hmm. So that is another bit. They 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 simply do not value all parts of the video game capture performance as yeah. actual artistry and work. It drives me absolutely mental because I feel like. It's just another one of those situations where we talk about it a lot, especially recently, with why are you so greedy and why are you like this? Mm. Like, I know that you can save a couple of bucks by, you know, not having a mocap artist come in and do something, just getting AI to just learn it from a video. Yeah, you can. But also, um, should you? No. No. The answer is no. There's lots of ways that AI can be used in games that is good and makes sense and is healthy and doesn't take someone's job away. You know, if you're filling in a background of trees rather than have someone painstakingly, you know, repaint a bunch of trees, you use generative fill to make a bunch of trees. You know, there's different ways that it can be used in good ways. And the thing that drives me mental is that these companies have so much money and would rather cut corners and get an AI to do it than have people in their games. And I think that it's all it's going to do, we're going to see a game come out that has used, if you know this strike doesn't achieve what it wants to, we're going to see a game come out that uses AI voice and AI other bits and pieces, m movement, art and stuff. And it's going to come out and it's going to be total trash and it's going to get ripped to shreds and then we won't see it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that AI will go the same way as an NFT and Bitcoin went, which is away and die. And everyone who ever used it is embarrassed. Um, to answer Ferris Wheeler's question, I feel like a game that uses any AI art as a central point. I'm not talking about like 
background fill i'm talking about you using an ai to generate a character model or you're using based on a, other people yeah something that's trained on other people's work exactly that's regardless of your opinion of ai art that's not art that's mm. theft you've stolen someone else's art um and it takes away any remit of being able to call a video game art as soon as you use that in your game i think um like i say there's ways it Goodness me. Jesus. There's ways it can be used healthily. Someone's falling over upstairs. Yeah, but uh, I I think as soon as you start using it, just willy-nilly, you take away the, the legal ability to use the word art mm -hmm. in your game. There is a great... Are you ready for me to sound like a real pompous snoot boy? Yes, please. There is a fantastic article uh, on the New Yorker's website mm -hmm. um, that was actually shared with me. I don't read the New Yorker. Uh, but it details... In sort of excruciating uh, level of uh, an excruciating level of depth about how, or, or just the encroachment of AI and the threat AI poses to pretty much every single creative industry, be that yeah. uh, art. Um, where are we? I've lost my place. Art, the written word, video, yeah. Yeah. voice, music. And it also details the various current lawsuits that are going on against, like representing the the artists against the aggrieved or the or the or the aggressors i should say the yeah. the the companies that are taking advantage of what is essentially just a gray area at the moment because yeah. there's no legal precedent that's really been set yeah so my real hope is because i think ai is such an unbelievably incredible the fact that they can do that is mental but there's got to be a way for it to be used for good. Like there's got to be a way to rein it in and leverage it for the right reasons. Whether um, that is, you know, the artists involved uh, sign up to it and they are credited and they are compensated fairly and something can be worked out there. And then these l legitimate AI generative tools pull exclusively from bases where people have contributed to that. That yeah. still raises the question of whether or not what results is art and that will, you know, that's a how long is a piece of string kind of debate. Yeah. You know, d people are going to have different definitions. And in some cases, it's going to be more, you know, obvious than others. Um, but at least that way, there there needs to be, a, I think, a legal precedent for what you can and can't do. Because at the moment, you're right, it is theft. It, mm -hmm. it just wantonly takes from other stuff. Something that was, again, detailed in this article, which will be in the link down, um, is they interviewed a particular artist who deals specifically in a certain style of art. Mm -hmm. And they found that their name was popping up a lot more in Google searches and they were trying to work out why. And it led back to, I think some news post somewhere on some, you know, one of those websites where they basically said, if you want to generate generate Lord of the Rings style art, yeah. put this person's name in as a keyword and you'll get stuff like that. And then this person looked at it and was like, this is so close to yeah. original work of mine that it, it doesn't, it's not okay. Yeah. Um, it's just it. They're, they're, this stuff needs to stop, but it could continue if it was done the right way. I just don't know what the right way is. Yeah. But I think like even if you have an, a data bank of like these artists have agreed that you can train your AI off them, at some point, then like do you say well every time this AI gets used, do you get a little bit of money or? Yeah. Do you just say like, well, once you're in there, we'll pay you for the privilege of having it in there in the first place, and then you know you're never going to know how much percentage it's be was trained so off of yours. Hard yeah, to work exactly. out what what the right way is to go about it. I don't think there's any way in which AI art is justifiable, and I think every single time I see AI generated art or videos, it makes me angry because I know that someone could have done that for and been paid for it mm -hmm. and uh benefited from it and i think that the more you take away sorry they're busting some stuff up so you can hear that <laughs> the loudest um, hoovering in the world uh, i think as soon as you take away a job from someone mm. you take away so many more things that are beneficial for society you start then adding to uh the climate crisis because ai sucks up so much energy mm -hmm. produces has got such a big carbon footprint if you don't pay someone they then can't go out and spend money the economy suffers because you gave it to robots good one big computer man <laughs> um and then also like i think the product suffers and the consumer suffers with things that generally become more soulless so quickly like, you can see an ai generated image 
and they just look soulless mm -hmm. and they just look they look generated a lot they of the look time, generated yeah. and they look weird because they're an amalgamation of hundreds of people's actual artwork that they've done i don't ever think there's an excuse to use ai art in mm -hmm. things i don't think there's ever an excuse to use ai to produce videos i think that if you use it it's if you say oh i haven't got the money to pay someone to do it i think well that's a cheap excuse and if you and they're never they're not going to get any money from you stealing their art mm -hmm. so i think ai in creative spaces is bad um, I think it's great and I hope that sag are able to make some change in this because it is very important, I think, that there is a line, a solid line drawn when it comes to using AI voices, mm -hmm. what people can and can't do. Because I think that like, why would anyone ever want to work for Activision ag again if you know that, oh, I record a voice lines for one character but then if they do any DLC or they bring this character back, they then don't ever need to bring me back because they can just yeah, make something. my voice again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when I say that I I think AI is incredible, I do. I genuinely mm. do believe that. Um, and when I say it needs... it needs, It's got good uses. It needs a better... You know, there needs to be a better use case for it and there needs to be a legal precedent set about how people can use it. That doesn't mean that I want to see it in games because to answer the question... Um, there was absolutely a dampener put on. You remember the Marvel show Secret Invasion? Secret Invasion, where yeah. the intro was all C uh, AI. AI generated, yeah, and it looked crap, and it looked like it was AI. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, that completely put a dampener on that show for me. Yeah, and so while I, while I can't say for certain that I would never play a game that I knew had AI in it it would definitely negatively impact the experience for me mm -hmm. because I would know that it was there. Yeah. And also, we are very early days now. The The whole AI landscape is only going to, like, the AI is only going to get cleverer. And in 10 and they're years... they're going to take over the world. They could take over the world. But in 10 years, AI might be appreciated completely differently to now in that a lot of people might just be, it might be just as ethically dubious as it is currently but people are just so apathetic mm. to it that it's just used everywhere and yeah. they, big companies forge ahead there could be legal precedent set and people are using it in the correct way and it could just be a part and parcel of games so if you were to like i'm hesitant to just swear off any game that has any kind of ai in it just because yeah in 10 years that might genuinely be where it is i don't want it to be like that to i be think clear, but... like i say ai I think in this specific, we're talking about AI art and mm -hmm. AI voice acting. I yeah. think, like I say, if you're using AI to put hair on someone's head, then I think, you know, that, fair enough. Oh, of course. You but know, like, as you said, if you're generating, AI art, generating terrains and stuff and and providing characters yeah. and NPCs with artificial intelligence is stuff that's always been around. It's it's the, it's the it's creative, very much the, it's the way it's invading the creative The new spaces. definition of AI in yeah. in everyone understands i think what we mean by that yeah. like there's obvious there's obvious differences in how ai has been used in games but like yeah if if a game came out in like tomorrow like the new call of duty had a, an ai generated intro it'd be like oh that's that's gross mm -hmm. i don't i don't like that but i do wonder what the situ what's the landscape going to be in 10 years yeah how much better is ai going to be and how sneaky are, how much sneakier are people going to be about using it are yeah. people going to agree to these terms and then just get better at hiding that they're using that they're using AI to generate stuff. Mm -hmm. I genuinely don't know, but personally, I I wouldn't want to play a game that has AI in it. But as I said, I don't think I can swear off it because it could well be going that way. Yeah, which is really depressing. But you know, got to have infinite growth forever, and the fewer people we have to pay. The better of the money we make. The big companies they bloody love that. Uh, but let us know what you think about AI. I think. Um, you know, generally, a lot of people are down on it, which makes perfect sense. But uh, people do sure love to use it. Yeah. So let us know it's what you true. think. Would you play a game with AI in it? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening and watching, everybody. There's a few places you can find us on the internet. Um, Ashton, do you want to read three sure of them? Sure can. Um, YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump for all of our video and live stream content. We're live on Twitch most of the time, but a special occasion on YouTube now and then. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can use that to get a free Twitch sub. And you can spend that on us if you fancy. Get all the benefits of being a sub with no extra cost. Mm. You get stickers. 
that you can put in chat and yeah. stuff. Uh, also, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, on all of which we are at Team Triple Jump, if you'd like to keep in the loop. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump is where you can go and support us and uh, find all sorts of amazing things that you get as rewards. Go and check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. And of course, Triple Jump is our website. There you can find links to literally everything that we do. And why not leave a five star review on your platform of choice to have something to do with Al Gore's rhythms? I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening listening everyone i uh, just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor again which of course mm -hmm. is tomba special edition where you can reserve your grave plot and play tomba into the afterlife doesn't Beautiful. that sound nice sounds nice doesn't it sounds lovely lovely and nice all right take care everyone see you next time bye, bye.